So now that you know all the key players, how do they work together to ensure that DNA is properly replicated in bacteria cells? So first we know that again, bacteria have one origin of replication, that where the replication fork is where the two strands open up and that it goes bi-directional. So at the origin of replication, once we begin to open this up, DNA will occur in both directions. Okay. We should be okay with this idea by now. Now, within that origin of replication, you're going to find an AT rich region and DNA DNA A boxes. The AT rich region precedes the origin of replication because it's easier to pull A and T apart as compared to C and G. And I'm pretty sure you guys can speculate why this occurs. Because how many hydrogen bands, how, how many hydrogen bonds do you have between A and T? And how many do you have between C and G? Now at these DNA DNA A boxes, DNA A proteins bind. When the DNA A proteins bind, they start to cause some distortion and things to start to separate. They also allow for the help of DNA C to come along, and then DNA C and DNA A recruit DNA B, which is also a helicase. And this is how we initiate replication in bacteria. So DNA A proteins bind to the DNA A boxes, DNA C proteins come aboard, and then DNA A and DNA C attract DNA B, which is a helicase. It's important to note here that in order to regulate the initiation, we're going by methylation. So there are these GATC methylation sites near the origin, and they are when they are fully methylated, replication can occur. After replication has occurred, these sites are no longer methylated, and so they have to then be fully methylated again before replication can occur again. So this allows for us to be sure, hey, replication has ended and it is time to start it again. And we're not replicating a DNA that's already being replicated at the same time. Okay, So we rely on the methylation of GATC methylation sites. Fully methylated, we can replicate. Not fully methylated, we can't replicate. So when we elongate, so we had our DNA A proteins, DNA C, DNA B, which attracted our helicase. Now what's going to happen? So as this DNA helicase starts to move in the five to prime, five prime to three prime end, it is unwinding the DNA by breaking the hydrogen bonds. As it's doing that, it's introducing these positive supercoils. So ahead of the fork, we have topoisomerase who's going to cut the positives and introduce negative supercoils. So he's unwinding those positive supercoils. We have these single-stranded binding proteins that are attaching to the DNA that has been pulled apart by helicase and keeping them apart so that those nucleotides are exposed and so that polymerase can do its job. So helicase is unwinding. Topoisomerase is relieving the positive supercoils. Single-stranded binding proteins are keeping these DNA molecules from reforming a double helix. Primase comes in and lays down an RNA primer. So this is a short RNA sequence that is necessary for DNA polymerase to do its job. Then after RNA has RNA primer has laid primase has laid the RNA primer, DNA polymerase 3 can come along and elongate the sequence from that primer. On the leading strand, this is a continuous process because it's adding it in the 5 to 3 direction. On the lagging strand, it's a discontinuous process because we have to make it appear to be in the 5 to prime 3, so 5 prime to 3 prime. So it's doing this by primer, Okazaki fragment, primer, Okazaki fragment. And an Okazaki fragment is a short DNA sequence. Okay? Now, some notes on these polymerases. So there are several in bacteria. DNA polymerase 3 is going to do our leading and lagging strands. So this is wholly responsible for doing replication. It's a holo enzyme, so it's not a single subunit. It's a complex that has 10. 
the alpha subunit is the one that's actually putting these bonds in place so they are bind, bonding the nucleotide on the parent strand to the one that we're making on the daughter strand dna polymerase one is the single subunit its job is to remove the rna that's laid in there by primase and replace it with dna and then we have dna polymerase two four and five who function in dna repair and replicating damaged dna now it's also important to note that there are some unusual characteristics about dna polymerase the first thing is it cannot covalently link the two individual nucleotides therefore it can't start the process so remember when we said we have RN or primase that comes in and lays an RNA primer. The purpose of this is it has to prime replication. It has to prepare it for DNA polymerase. If we didn't have a primer, DNA polymerase couldn't do its job because it cannot initiate. It can't connect those first two. It can only go into a strand that exists and elongate it. Okay, so DNA polymerase 3 relies on primase. DNA polymerase 1 can elongate from the Okazaki fragments that are currently in place. The next issue is it can only go in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So remember, our DNA is anti-parallel. It runs 5' prime to 3' on one side and 3' prime to 5' on the other. So we, DNA polymerase can only function in one direction. So this gives us the leading versus the lagging strand. So it's fine going in the 5 to 3 prime on the leading strand. One primer, DNA polymerase comes along, does its job. The other side, since it's in the opposite direction, it takes us a bit more time. So we have to keep laying a primer and adding Okazaki fragments. So we can only do this in short sequences. Okay. The leading strand goes in the direction of the replication port. The lagging strand is going away from it okay leading strand continuous lagging strand discontinuous leading strand one primer lagging strand multiple primers then so this is a more realistic view of what's going on here here's our helicase here's our primer they are physically connected this is going to allow for them to be more efficient and when you have the primase and the helicase it's called a primosome Primase, helicase, two DNA polymerases are called a replosome. And these things have a physical linkage to each other that keeps them on the DNA moving in concert to accomplish this job in as short as time as possible. You'll notice here the looping out on the lagging strand that's allowing it to resemble or is, that's allowing it to resemble the leading strand and for DNA polymerase to function in the 5 to 3 prime no, or, uh, orientation. Sorry. Now, another note about DNA polymerase. It's a processive enzyme, so it doesn't fall off. It doesn't add a nucleotide, fall off, come back on, add a nucleotide, fall off, come back on. So remember, 10 subunits, alpha is doing the actual attaching of the nucleotides, Beta is this plant protein that's holding it on, keeping it there, allowing it to slide along the DNA. So because it has this beta subunit, it's allowed to accomplish its job more efficiently. So without the beta subunit, it can only put on about 10 nucleotides before it will fall off. But with the beta subunit, it's able to get about 750 nucleotides per second. Okay? And so... It's, it stays on, it can does its, does its job more efficiently. Another note about polymerase is its fidelity. So this means it has this high degree of accuracy. DNA replication in general, but also polymerase. DNA replication in general has this fidelity because of the stability and putting in the correct hydrogen bonds. So when you have hydrogen bonds between G and C or A and T, it's more stable than having a hydrogen bond between A and G. Okay, so that's one level. Another level is if the incorrect nucleotide is placed in, it has this helix distortion that slows down the process and doesn't let DNA polymerase effectively do its job. And then the third level would be DNA polymerase has the ability to proofread. 
so it can make sure that it's doing the correct thing and if it's not it has this five prime exonuclease so remember we talked about endo now we're exo at the end that allows it to take out the incorrect base pair and then it can put in the correct one okay so these three steps allow dna to be dna replication to be faithful okay and that concludes our dna our bacteria dna replication